Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to explain a little bit more where Bayes' theorem came from and to do that we're going to uh, lean back on the initial theorems of conditional probability that we've learned so far. The first theorem was this, that the probability that A will occur is equal to the probability that A intersect B will occur divided by the probability that B will occur provided that A has already occurred. We can also write it in a more general form like this, where the probability of A will occur is equal to the probability that A will occur intersected with A sub i, divided by the probability that A sub i will occur, provided that A has occurred. So in a more general form, and remember that A sub i can be A1, A2, A3, A4, some independent event that will then cause us to do something else, and then Bayes' theorem says, well, if we have the known outcome from the other event, what was the probability that the initial event has occurred? So what we're going to do here now is realize that we have another way of expressing the probability of the event A occurring. We can say that the probability of the event A occurring, according to theorem 2, is equal to, uh, let's see here, the probability of A sub 1 times the probability that A will occur provided that A sub 1 has occurred, and that should be a 1 there, plus the probability that A sub 2 will occur times the probability that A will occur provided A sub 2 has occurred plus all the way like that all the way to plus A sub n or I should say the probability the probability that A sub n has occurred times the probability that A will occur provided A sub n has occurred. Okay, also realize that we can then write this in a more general form, that the probability that A will occur is equal to the sum, because it's basically a sum, from I equals 1 to N of the probability, and oh, forgot my probability symbol here, the probability that A sub 1 has occurred, or I should say A sub I, because we want to write it in general form, times the probability that A will occur provided A sub I has occurred. And notice this portion right here, appears in the bottom portion of Bayes' theorem. And where does that come from? That simply comes from finding the probability that event A will occur. Now again, what is event A? Well, event A is of course picking one of these marbles out of a bag in our previous example, which is the outcome of us having either tossed a heads or a tail. So again, if we toss heads, we'll pull a marble out of this bag. If we throw tails, we'll pull a marble out of that bag. We take the marble out and look at it and say, what's the probability of getting a blue or a red marble? Well, we can turn that around and say, if we got a blue marble or if we got a red marble, what was the probability that we tossed the heads or we tossed the tails? So notice that this is where the bottom part of Bayes' theorem comes from. And notice the top part of Bayes' theorem is simply one of these elements. So it's the probability of one of these events occurring, A sub I, meaning a sub 1 or a sub 2 and so forth, times the probability that we pull either a red or a blue marble, provided that either head or tails was tossed. And so it's one of those singular events divided by the whole sum of them, which will then give us the probability that a sub i will occur, provided that a has occurred. And again, a will be either pulling a red or a blue marble, that will then result in the probability that either heads or tails was thrown on the coin as an example. So where heads and tails are the independent events that drove the decision as to which bag we're going to pull a marble from. Now, notice that this really is the probability of A occurring. The probability of A is the probability of either pulling a blue marble or the probability of pulling a red marble because A is really the independent event relative to throwing a heads or a tails. Alright, so now we get kind of a feel of where the theorem came from. Now we're going to develop mathematically the theorem and show you some examples of how to actually apply Bayes' theorem to make some sense out of that theorem. But at this point, you should be able to already recognize that the probability of A, so that's the probability of either pulling a red marble or a blue mar marble out of one of those two bags, is the denominator in Bayes' theorem, and the numerator is the probability of either throwing heads or tails times the probability of pulling a blue marble, providing that you threw either heads or tails. And so that's how you want to look at the theorem. So, still interested? We'll slowly unravel the mystery of Bayes' theorem in one or two more videos, so stay tuned.